Jonah, we just had a revival. A wicked city of Nineveh, that's not yet the capital of Assyria, has gotten right by a man that walked in there. Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. I believe the preacher knows that, alright, let's just get this over with. I don't want to go through another attack by the Lord. I'm surely not going to take a ship this time. If I'm going to do something, I'll do it for the Lord. And some people have that attitude. So when we come in chapter 4, verse 1, after an entire city, I'm talking about the king. I'm talking about his, his subjects. I'm talking about the people got saved. They got right. They're repenting. They're fasting. They're even called a fast of food and water for the animals. You know, they're thinking, you know what? Maybe the, if the animals cried out for God. And we left off with the fact is that God Chapter 3, verse 10, God saw their works, and they turned from their evil way, and God repented. Look at that, God repented. See, repentance is not from, not always from sin. God's like, okay, I'm going to destroy you. And a second thought, maybe I won't. Of the evil that he said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. That's the repentance. The evil would have been the judgment. However God had planned to destroy Nineveh, the men and their works, Old Testament, none under the church age, they're not Christians. Okay? There's a big difference. You gotta rightly divide the scripture. But, it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. What? You want to come by me again? Listen, the, the, the years that I preached at the farmer's market, and I'm saying not even 30 people at one time. If, if, if I would have had the, uh, 30 people come up, get down on their knees, and ask God to save them, and get right, they'd be calling 911, and not for the man yelling that they called 911. Be like, we need an ambulance. The preacher's passed out. He's fainted. Then I would rejoice. And he prayed unto the Lord. Well, isn't it good? I've had this kind of prayer with the Lord sometimes. Not, not all prayers like, Lord, thank you very much. You're a good God. You're wonderful. He, I, he prayed to the Lord. It's Jehovah, capital O, capital O, capital R, capital D. And he said, I pray thee, O Lord. Was not this my saying? When I was yet in my country. All right, when I was in Israel. Is this not what I told you? So now we're going to get a little more story. That we did not get in Jonah chapter 1. Therefore I fled before. Unto Tarshish. So before he goes to Tarshish. Gets on this ship. He has words with God. Now we're going to understand why Jonah went the other way. For I knew, past tense, that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. What? 
Jonah, yes, I want you to go to Nineveh, that great wicked city. I want you to preach to what I tell you to preach. God, you're gracious, you're wonderful, you're terrific, you're forgiving. I'm out of here. This is the hatred the Jews had for the Gentiles. No less, even you see in the time of Jesus, the, the, the Samaritans, the half priests, the Jew and Gentile together. This is the anger you would pick up in, in Ezra and Nehemiah when they find out that there have been mixed marriages. This you would find out when Peter's in the trance and, and he sees that, that, that she... And you know, no, not so, Lord. Nothing unclean is coming to my lips. I want you to go to, to, to this Gentile's house. You want me to what? And you can think about the disgust that Peter had in that house. There's a family dog or cat that's unclean. They're unclean. There's the pork being cooked or lobster that's unclean here's these uncircumcised brute beast beings that when a woman of Gentiles comes to the loving great what would Jesus do you dog and you know what five-letter word that we have in our vocabulary, which I'm not going to say. Jesus wouldn't say that. Yes, he did. She was a female, she was a dog. A female dog is a bitch. I'm not cussing, that's what a female dog is. That's what he called her. And Jonah's like, all right, you want me to go to those Gentiles? Now, this is the nation that will take Israel to captivity. This is a wicked and vile nation that I told you last night that they painted on their, their walls and they painted on their, their marrows. When they go into battle, the, the, the sufferings they did to the people of the captivity. They were rude and they were crude. And Jonah says, okay, right, here's the harshness of God. Now, your typical American doesn't even feel about it. Everything happens, it's all God's fault. You know that? But watch. I mean, all the hurricanes and all that, the insurance company says it's an act of God. Job 1 or 2 said it could be the devil. I knew that our gracious God. Well, what's the gracious God? Well, maybe he won't do all that he said of the judgment. And merciful. Maybe he will show them mercy. Slow to anger. That's long-suffering. God's not willing that any should perish. Of great kindness and repentance thee of the evil. And guess what? That's what happened in 310. And Jonah is right, and it makes Jonah angry. Now, no Christians have any enemies. We're not. We're to love the brethren, and we are to love the unsaved. Now, there are some Christians. I, I don't hate them. They're just they're impossible to be around. They're, they're just. They are salt on, on an icy road to me. It don't mix. I don't hate them. But if you were to think about the worst person you've ever met in your life. And we're not supposed to hate anybody. We're not supposed to think evil, wicked thoughts. We're not going to, oh God, we'll get him. <laughs> But what if you had that one person in your life? Know? 
and the merciful great God saved their soul, how would you react? How did Jonah act? I guarantee they would come into Israel and they would make the vile and wickedness known. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me. Jonah wants everybody to kill him. For it's better for me to die than to live. Okay, what's the trouble here? Go back to chapter 3, verse 4. Yet 40 days, then it shall be overthrown. Day 41, what happened? Jonah's a false prophet. Ha! Ah, Jonah, you said 40 days! We don't know if, if, if God told Jonah 40 days. We don't Maybe that was of God and just so we weren't told. Don't know where the 40 days came from. Look at Deuteronomy. Jonah's law. Jewish law. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Verse 22. Now, there's loopholes. But watch this. Don't... Deuteronomy 22, 18. I don't know, my mouth ain't working with it. Dry. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord. Now, Jonah didn't say the name of the Lord. But, what was the reaction of the people? They got right with God. Capital G O D. On the ship, he told them I was a Hebrew. I feared the God creator. But he didn't say that to them. Stay there. I'm going to show you what he said. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That's the message. If the following, if the thing follow not, 41 day, 42nd day, nor come to pass, 43rd day, Now, I, 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 I don't know what the Ninevites had. I don't know if they had calendars or watches, whatever. Like, 50th day. Nothing happened. We'll see, we'll see Jonah in a minute. That is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. But the prophet has spoken presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Back to Jonah. Jonah goes in and says, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Verse 10, God saw their works, they turned from his evil way, God repented of the evil that he said he would do unto them, and he did it not. Jonah says, verse 3, Now therefore, Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life. I'm a false prophet, God. God. Chapter 3, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it. Preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Now, we don't know that yet 40 days of Nineveh shall overthrow it. We don't know that's the actual words of God. Chapter 1, verse 2. Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. I'm going to say an assumption that maybe that's not what God wanted Jonah to say. I'm thinking maybe God, like somebody, like what, what I did, repent. Believe on the Lord today we in the church. Believe on the Lord Jesus. 
Listen, listen, Ninevites, you guys are wicked. You're vile. You got to get right. You got to turn to God. This is just wickedness. Oh, John said right away, 40 days, you're gone. Now, we don't, I, we don't know that was from God or not. But Jonah's like, hey, I'm a false. If I go back to the Hebrews, ah, you were with those Gentiles, you false prophet. He said, oh, come on, Stiley. You're, you're presuming again. Really? What was Peter? He was sitting down having a ham sandwich, some clams, sitting down with the Gentiles. Oh, boy, here comes John and the Gentiles. See you guys. I'll be back in a while. Can't be with you guys. I'm sorry. I'm I'm a Hebrew. Save my plate, though, please. Peter was converted. Peter liked that food because he was sitting with them until the Jews came. You know how the Hebrews, the Israelites, would have to treat Jonah? You're a liar. You're a false. Then about forty. It's been 56 days now, Jonah. How, what would the law, even the law would prescribe the fact is you would have to kill Jonah. Jonah says, kill me now, see? Let me not go home and face them. Now, the thing comes to be is, Jonah takes place about 700 B.C. They're about. Nineveh falls about 612 BC. Nineveh will fall. God. You see, America will fall. But there are there are Christians in it right now. They're praying and they're working. And they're getting the gospel out. They're trying to get people to repent. God says, okay. Three or four people got right. There's still enough people who want to get saved. I ain't gonna drown in Florida. I mean, yeah, Florida, America. When Lot went to go tell his family, "Come on, listen, God's gonna," <laughs> no one believed him. Not even his wife. Not even really Lot. And the Bible says that Lot was just because when the angel saw up that day, he sit back in his lazy, lazy boy chair. I don't know what they watched in the corner because there was no TV. The angels had to grab him and pull him out. Jonah's like, better for me to die than live because I'm a false prophet, thanks to you, God. They said, the Lord, does thou well to be angry? You just imagine God probably saying that with, with, with a little sarcasm, with a little, you know, making Jonah bitter here. But Jonah's not finished. Jonah went out of the city. He's still in Nineveh. So he didn't go in there and preach his message and walk out. It's 41, 42, 43 days and Jonah's still there. And the people are rejoicing. 45, 46, God hasn't And they're all probably coming up to Jonah. What do we do? How do we do it? And what do we do? Jonah is now furious. Because they're not dead. The city's not destroyed. He does not want to be there. Imagine if God now would okay. Hey, Jonah, i got a mission field for you. What? Nineveh. Oh. Really? You see what these people eat? Peter's like, mmm, yeah, yummy. What's that over there? What's a lobster? You eat that? With butter? Woo wee! Wait a minute. Any Hebrews around? Alright, we'll be right over here. This pulled beef sandwich? Oh, man! 
God, what did you do to his Hebrews? You know Peter's attitude. Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city. I don't know why east side, but the Bible says on the east side. That's the side the sun would come up. Uh, let's see if they come over here for the sunrise service. They're not coming out for the sunrise service. Oh, come on. You mean they got rid of S-Star and all that that the church won't get rid of? Really? You haven't read Jeremiah. And there made he a booth, a piece of tabernacle. That's what it would have been called in Jerusalem, not in Israel, but in, in Jerusalem. That would have been the piece. I'm not saying it is the piece of tabernacle, but he made a booth. That's what it's hot in the middle of a desert and sat under it in the shadow. He's out in the sun, so he makes his little shelter. Till he might see what would become of the city. 51 days, 57 days, 60 days. He's waiting for the axe to fall. God has repented, and Jonah's like, come on, destroy it. And there had to have been, I mean, north, east, south, or west, there had to have been a reason for him to choose that east side. The Lord God prepared a gourd. Because Jonah was out on his gourd. To make it to come up over Jonah. That it might be a shadow over its head. Now, listen, don't go reading the commentaries and all that. God prepared a gourd. God prepared a great fish. This was no ordinary gourd. This gourd was huge. This gourd was huge enough. It came from nowhere, by the way. There's no vegetation where Jonah is. This gourd grows up. It's prepared by God. It's big enough that it grows over its head and he's got his shadow in the storm, in the, in the desert. And deliver him from his grief of being out in the sun. So Jonah was exceedingly glad for the gourd. Oh, great Lord of glory. Oh, I like you, gourd. My gourd. But God prepared a worm. God keeps preparing things for Jonah. When the morning rose on the east side, the next day it smoked the gourd, the worm, that it withered. The gourd is no more. There's one big fat worm. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, Jonah. Hey, listen. If a snake can talk to Eve and Nance can talk to Ben, that worm was talking to Jonah like, whew, that was yummy. Oh, Jonah, did you want some of that? I'm sorry. <clears throat> can, I, can I have some of your shade and that booth? And it came to pass, when the sun did rise out of the east, and something to it, that God made a familiar east wind. God made a familiar wind out in the Mediterranean Sea. Now the east wind, which brings great destruction in the Bible. When God brings the east wind in the Bible, you are in trouble. It brought locusts. It brought famine. And the sun beat on the head of Jonah. That he fainted.
probably been dehydrated. And wish himself to die again. That's the third time. And said, it is better for me to die than live. Why don't you just go up and leave? Go back in. I'm not going back in that city. I would assume at this point, as, as happy as Nineveh is, I would assume that there's a well there with nice water. They would have been all too happy to get Jonah some water. I ain't drinking that Gentile water. You know what I mean? And God said to Jonah, Does thou well to be angry for the gourd? Now he's angry at the gourd. He was angry at God. He's angry at the dead. Now he's angry at the I'm surprised he didn't get angry at the whale. He was dead. He couldn't get angry. And when he was put out on the, on the, on the on the shore, on dry land, God rushed him. He couldn't have time to be angry at the way home. What did the gourd do? Well, it, it died. Um, look at verse 7. But God prepared a worm when it was morning rose. The next day, it the worm smoked the gourd with it. Not the gourd. It was the worm's fault. Jonah is so angry and angry, 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 he doesn't even know what he's angry at. And you know God don't lie. Why are you angry for the gourd? And you just imagine that, that worm there. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry, God. That was a delicious gourd. God's like, would you shut up? Guy's angry enough right now. And he said, God, I mean, Jonah said, I do well to be angry even unto death. How many times is that now? I lost count. The entire, well, you know, I'm not going to say all of Nineveh got saved, but the city of Nineveh is now, right now, you just imagine here in the background, we got the joy, 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 down in our heart. Where? Down in our heart. Oh, shut up. Dead child. Gorge. God, are you speaking to me? Do you see it? Yeah, and there's some cases, the person you hate. The person you don't like, the happier they're getting and the worse you're getting. That's called bitterness. Job is, Jonah has got a root of bitterness. And he will be angry at anything and everything. And the only thing he needs to do is get right is, you can't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus hasn't been around. He's got to get up out of his booth. He's got to go in the city. He's got to say, okay, God is merciful. God is, is gracious. God is kind. He saved these people. Go in there and say, hey, okay, guys. Isn't God great? Find a place, a little prayer closet, and say, okay, God, what do you want me to do? And I can't go back to Israel because... Because we're a prejudice. The Jews are prejudiced. And, and don't think because the Ethiopians were prejudiced too. The, the first three times or four times abomination shows up in the Bible, it's the, it's the, Ethi uh, it's the Egyptians. Well, we can't hang around shepherds. We can't hang around Hebrews. We can't have, you know. So he's angry at the Gord and he wants to die again. Then said the Lord. And the Lord is carrying the conversation. You know what God wants Jonah to do? Get over it. I want to use you. Thou 
has had pity on the gourd. Pity? And he's angry? And he's pitiful. Somebody killed my gourd. <laughs> you know, that little worm, he probably took off. What's a gourd? That gourd was God's mercy and grace and kindness. The very thing that you said that God was that you ran to Tarsus. The very thing that God is when you preach to the city and they got right. And God saw you were in a predicament where you had a heat stroke. God gave you that gourd and you were pleased with that gourd and God got rid of that gourd and now you're angry. Your relief is in Nineveh. For that which thou was not labored, you didn't plant the seed, you didn't break the ground up, neither made it grow, you didn't water it, which came up in a night. And perished in a night. That was all God, Jonah. You know, you know what you would call that? Forgive me, but you would call that the miracle glory. Should not I, God, spare Nineveh, that great city? There's a great city again. Which he has, where are more than six, four thousand, six times two, 120,000 persons that cannot discern between right hand and their left hand. That's anyone under three years old. About three more years, you would have the same amount of years. You have about the same amount of years that Herod sought the death of the children. Another interesting quick wiki dicky. Could have been also about the age that, you know, we know they were newborn, but even still in Egypt. Here is male and female children, don't have any others, 120,000. <laughs> Well, Junior, show me your left hand. No, that's your foot. No, don't stick your tongue out at me. Show me your left hand. They don't know their left hand. They don't know their right hand. They haven't even learned to tie their shoes. There are over 120,000 children that don't know their left hand from the right hand. And I spared them because they repented. And the parents and the grandparents and aunts and uncles. And in this particular statement, and also much cattle. Interesting place where that word cattle shows up in the Bible. I would have wiped out the cat. That closes the book of Jonah. And there are some say, well, you know, Jonah got right, and this is how we got the story. And that's not what it said. We don't know who wrote Jonah. But well, here's this great story that's unbelievable by Christians. Remarkable. And here's this great story about this city, this wicked, vile, Gentile, Gentile city. 
And it closes with an angry prophet that preached to him nine words. He's out in the sun in a booth. 120,000 children I saved in their cattle. Period. Excuse me, question mark. Only God would have such a book like that. It ends in a question. Genesis is the book of life. Book of generation. And it closes with Joseph in a coffin in Egypt. That's a book of life. Psalms closes with that everything I'm not sure, that everything hath have breath, praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. That's a good one. The book of Revelation to the fact is, even so come Lord Jesus, the end. Really, it's not the end. But it goes on all eternity. What a way to end the book. What happened to Jonah? What happened to I mean, like we said, we know in 612 B.C., the city of the so the, the, the repentance did not last long. About a hundred years. The, you got the Baptists today think, oh, we get this revival in America, and America will survive all ancient and bond cities of, of errors and errors and, 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 and global times and, and eons and egons and everything like that. America will, America will go up further than New Jerusalem. If America got right, it would only be a few years. When we read the story of Judah, there were kings that did right. Okay, maybe the next king did right for a while, but that usually after the great king and the great revival, the next one came along and that didn't do too good. Because then along comes the Babylonians. Nebuchadnezzar gets right, gives testimony to Jehovah. I was out there eating grass and all that. I give all my power, all my greatness. I think he's going to be in heaven to God. Boom. Next chapter. Babylon is falling. Look at Job 42. Job goes all this time with misery. Forty-two chapters of Job, and he got beaten. Right, Job forty-two. My question is: Job died. Being old and full days. My question after you read Job 42 is Did he still have the boils? Because 42 doesn't say he was healed. He got his, he's got his family back, his children have been resurrected. Where's his wife? You have Aunt Jemima. On Jamaica, there with her pancakes. There, where's the wife? Look at Exodus. Exodus forty. Nobody could write the Bible. It says the Bible. Closing next is off, for the cloud of the Lord was, was upon the tabernacle by day and fire by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all his journey.
Okay. And Moses' death, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 34. Last verse. And all the mighty hand, and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. But he died and did not go into the promised land. Joshua. Joshua 24. Last verse. Elias, the son of Aaron, died, and they buried him in, in, in the hill that pertained to Phileas, the son, which was given him in Mount Ephraim. So all the great works of Joshua, it ends in death. That's Genesis. Judges, 21. Here's a great one. In those days there was no king in Israel, and every man did that which right in his own eyes. That's the whole theology of Judges. Matthew, 28. Twenty-eight, eighteen. Jesus came and thanked them, saying, "All power is given to him." And then he goes up to heaven, and he only shows up to Paul once or twice. Second Timothy four. End of Paul's life. Paul's life. Second Timothy four ten. Demons has forsaken me. Croesus is in Galatia, Titus in Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Mark's here, but take him; he's proper ministry. Tychicus, I, I'm sending to Ephesus. I left the cloak at Trosus. Can you get that in the books and the parchments? Alexandria Carpenter has done me much evil. Nineteenth sloop facility, but you know he's dying. He's gonna have his head chopped off. Erastus abode in Corinth. Atrophus left in Malita sick. There's your there's your your fossil with the healing sign. The Lord Christ be with thy spirit, grace be unto you, and then he gets he gets his head separated from his body. Acts, last book. I mean we could do this all night. Acts twenty eight. All the great things that's happened in the book of Acts. Oh, we could get thousands of people to join the church. Oh great. The Holy Spirit. Acts 28, 31, Paul is in his hired house for two years. He's rented a house. He didn't own that. He's rented a house for two years, and he's preaching the kingdom of God, teaching those things with concern the Lord. He's not biting them to church. With all confidence, and no man's forbidden. I mean, he's out there preaching. That's it. Only God can write such a book. And we leave Jonah with, hey, even the cattle. 